Welcome to the first in a series of lectures on the physiology of the endocrine system. These lectures are meant to be at the level of an undergraduate course in human anatomy and physiology. Let's begin with an important definition. Homeostasis is the maintenance of constant conditions in the internal environment. Note that word maintenance. A common mistake that students make is to define homeostasis as simply constant conditions in the internal environment. The body tries to maintain a normal temperature. If you're too cold and need to gain heat, you will shiver and muscular activity will warm you. Your blood pressure needs to be maintained as well. The heart and blood vessels as well as the kidney react to nervous and chemical signals to maintain blood pressure homeostasis. Blood glucose also needs to be maintained within normal levels. This illustration shows how blood glucose changes over time. Notice that when blood glucose is too high, the body sends a signal to lower it, and when the blood glucose is too low, a different signal is sent to raise it. So the glucose levels in the body are adjusted to maintain glucose homeostasis. Homeostasis requires communication. In order to maintain a normal balance, groups of cells in different places in the body need to send and receive information. Your body has billions of cells. In order for such a complex organism to function properly, communication is required. You've already seen how the nervous system acts to communicate from one part of the body to another. Now let's see how communication is maintained by chemical signals. In this series of lectures, we will be looking at the relationship between the hypothalamus and pituitary, we'll look at the thyroid gland, the adrenal cortex and medulla, the endocrine pancreas, and male and female reproductive endocrinology. Endocrine glands make chemical signals that are released into the bloodstream and are carried everywhere in the body. Only certain cells will respond. These cells have receptors for the hormone and are called target cells. You can think of these chemical signals, these hormones, as keys. The keys are made in the endocrine glands and are released into the bloodstream and go everywhere. Certain cells, target cells, have locks or receptors that these keys will fit into. When the key and lock combination come together, when the endocrine hormone and receptor come together, it changes the activity of the cell. For example, the hormone glucagon will fit into a receptor on the liver cell to signal the cell to release glucose. So hormones go everywhere. They act on target cells, cells that have receptors for the hormone. What might be the advantage of this kind of communication compared to the nervous system? The effect of hormones in the body are of course related to the amount of hormones secreted but can also be affected by the number of receptors. We'll have more to say about this in future lectures. So for example, if you don't have enough hormone, the body can increase the number of receptors. That's called upregulation. If you have too much hormone, the body can reduce the number of receptors and that's called downregulation. So what do these chemical signals, these hormones, look like? Well, they look like a lot of different things. And let's take a brief survey of the different kinds of molecules that can act as signals or hormone, because that's what we're talking about here, communication via chemical signals. Hormones can have the shape of peptides. They can be short chains of amino acids. Here we see thyroid releasing hormone, a very small molecule with only three amino acids. Here's parathyroid hormone, a protein, a longer chain of amino acids. Parathyroid hormone, hormone is critical in the management of calcium homeostasis. Hormones can be quite large in complex molecules. Here we see a glycoprotein. This is one part of thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. 
follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH, have similar shapes. Hormones can have the shape of steroids. The steroid backbone can be modified in various ways to give us the steroid hormones. This is an example of estrogen. Hormones can look like amines. This hormone, epinephrine or adrenaline, is made in the adrenal medulla. So the point is that hormones can have a variety of different shapes. The messenger can have many forms, but they all work to carry a message to a cell. Cells with receptors for the hormone will respond. These are called target cells. Hormone is a messenger. In our next video, we'll look at how hormone release is regulated and we'll look at more details on the interaction of the hormone with cellular machinery.